Uh, let's start by, first of all, talking a little bit about you, your background. Um, you're a professional photographer. Ended up in Omaha, went to a bar called The Mac, probably get me a job as a waiter or something like that. Lo and behold, the man was Larry King. I had no idea who he was. It was just a whirlwind. He had all this money and, and power. Within a couple of days, I was off on a private jet. When you say important people, Rusty, are you talking about political? It went all the way up to the White House. These people were leaders of industry. They were doing things that I did not feel was right. Who would you go tell? Because they pulled the puppet strings. There was one instance where Colonel Michael Aquino came to a motel room and he got from Larry King a suitcase and it was filled with bearer bonds and cash. There was millions of dollars in that thing. It was for the Iran Contra. Embassy Row in Washington, D.C. They had parties there. On the surface, they looked like all up and up. Then the party was over with, and there'd be a few guys that would stay after. They would have a sex party. This was at King's house. <laughs> okay. How could this man afford Learjet's uh, lavish parties and also renting a, a mansion on Embassy Row, Row in D.C.? He would prime client. It pray I would be a better word for it. Mm -hmm. They went to this church and hit him up for $1.8 million. Well, there was a set of nuns that he got a bunch of money from, mm -hmm. a couple million dollars. There was Boys Town and various other organizations. Everybody doesn't know what goes on at Boys Town. <laughs> As I recall, Rusty, the Boys Town was one of King's primary recruiting grounds for young boys and girls. Very much so. I believe the man who's running it now is Father Val Peter. Mm -hmm. Not a good choice. <laughs> okay. Why is that? He was, he was up to his elbows in this. What they were doing is providing sexual favors to... Whoever had money or political whoever influence. Whoever King told them to. Usually it was done for the purpose of compromising somebody. Mm-hmm. It didn't take me very long to figure out that they had two sets of books going. Mm -hmm. I knew that was wrong. One of the things that really made me worry about how to get out was the fact that I'd seen Robert Wadman. He was the, the chief police. of the Omaha Police Department. Yes. Wadman was pretty deeply involved in abuse of the kids, was he not? Yeah. Yeah. One of the girls that he frequented was Alicia Owen. Okay. I do remember that Alicia Owen's allegation was that Chief Wadman had made her pregnant. He covered up so much stuff. You know, Larry flew little kids all over the country for people mm -hmm. to be sex toys for people with perverse needs. You know, I heard that there were somewhere in the neighborhood of at least 80 people. He got kids from all over the country. A lot of them came from Boys Town or orphanages or places to where they'd really not be missed. He also cataloged kids. He'd pick them to order. Okay. It became known popularly as the Franklin cover-up, and Senator John DeCamp, a state senator in Nebraska, was on the banking committee, as was Senator Lauren Schmidt. This started out as a banking investigation into the Franklin Credit Union, which was uh, being directed at the time by a man named Larry King, not the Larry King of talk show fame, but a, a gentleman who uh, apparently was uh, very big in Republican politics, uh, not only at the state level, but he uh, sang at the inauguration of uh, two, I think it was Reagan, wasn't it? Uh, it was 1984 and 88. 19, yeah, 84 and 88. And he was also head of the Black Republican Caucus. This, was a, this guy was a mover and shaker in Republican politics. And what started out as a banking investigation quickly led into this area of human trafficking, uh, prostitution, pornography, and drugs, I think, as I understand it as well. And, and more. Uh, <laughs> and more. <laughs> and now what, what's going on here is King was arrested and ultimately charged with embezzlement and not anything at all to do with all of this other stuff. So what we're doing now is we're kind of talking about the, the real action that was going on here. Let me ask you this. You were talking about him paying Wadman, Chief Wadman of the Omaha Police Department, who, by the way, is gone, long gone from there, uh, as yeah, I understand he's it. he's out teaching law in Utah. Yeah. Where was King getting $50,000 a week to pay Wadman? Well, he was making his money, supposedly off these restaurants and that. Mm -hmm. But what he was doing is he would hit up these churches or whoever else, mm -hmm. and he'd tell them to write it to account number 888888, okay. which was his account. His account, okay. <laughs> he would 
would pay the interest on it to whoever the group was or the person investing it. Right. And when it came time to renew it, if nothing else worked, he'd offer him a quarter or half percent more interest. Did any of this other money that he was paying Wadman, did any of it come from other criminal activities? I, I don't doubt one bit. It was nothing unusual for Larry King to have a million dollars on his American Express card in a month. Wow. And pay it off. And pay it off. And the way Larry put it was, this is so bizarre that nobody will ever believe you if you told them. Mm -hmm. When I got into this, I had no idea. I thought I was working for somebody legitimate. Mm -hmm. And by the time that I realized that it was not on the up and up, it was to the point to where what I'd seen would have probably brought me in as an accessory, mm -hmm. even though I had no involvement in it. Yeah. Who do you go tell? Right. Because, you know, you see the chief of police taking money. He's rubbing elbows with all these powerful people. He had a daycare center in Omaha that he ran as a nonprofit. Are you talking about King? Yeah, Larry King did. Okay. And the guy that owned the building got wind of what Larry was doing mm -hmm. and basically boarded up the doors. What was Larry doing at the daycare center? Oh, he was finding kids. Okay. And he would go rent them out, mm -hmm. um, whether it be for himself or for others. How did they get that past the parents, for example? You know, a lot of them were orphaned street kids. He'd say, well, my son's having a party, a sleepover, or something like that. His wife, her parents were doctors in where else but the Cayman Islands. Oh, boy. Okay, there's two places left in the world where he can hide money, and that's Belize and the Cayman Islands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So basically that's where a lot of the money ended up going. What were you involved in? Well, I was his photographer, and I shot the parties. He would have these five and $10,000 a plate fundraisers. Mm -hmm. He had me made over. One morning he spent $4,800 on clothes for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he went as far as to have my hair cut, colored, and permed by Nancy Reagan's hairdresser. Okay. $2,000 hairdo. Wow. Yep. <laughs> Didn't blink an eye at it. The things that I was shooting would be these parties. Lo and behold, he had another photographer that was shooting the kitty porn, the gay porn, the um, snuff films. Snuff yep. films. I, I did say snuff films. That's where they would actually kill somebody. Okay. And have it on film. They would sell the tape to these wealthy business people for tremendous amounts of money. This is where I got approached on various occasions to do these things, and I wanted no part of them. Mm -hmm. And one person of which was the late Hunter Thompson. Really? So Hunter Thompson approached you about doing a snuff film? Yep. Okay. He, he was introduced to me by Larry King, and he offered me $100,000 to shoot a snuff film, or uh -huh. actually Larry offered it to me, but it mm -hmm. was through him. Yeah. Larry really pressured me to do it, and I wouldn't do it. And he had this other photographer who was doing these things for him. Mm -hmm. And I saw the, the other photographer on three different occasions. One of them, I even got to go talk to him. Mm -hmm. The guy had the same build that I had, pretty much a little bit slighter, but he just happened to have the same curly dark hair that mine had been made up to be. What, what, what do you attribute that to? What they were doing. Are they framing you? Yes. I was their scapegoat. Mm -hmm. They were passing me off at the parties where the, the families and, and all the attention was at. They, he would have one party that was the social gathering. You bring the wife, sometimes even the kids. Mm -hmm. Then after that, there would be a few people that would stick around or come back and they would have a separate party, mm -hmm. and that was these sex parties. Your wildest dreams and worst nightmares. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what went on. <laughs> wow. They would get these kids from the street. Mm -hmm. He'd offer them a life, and they didn't realize that he was going to take